This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good afternoon, Rabbi Sai, it's Asar Bateves, as we prepare for Shabbos, Parshas Vayechi, Shabbos Chazak. In the past, we've spoken about the depth of Asar Bateves, why the Avudraham says you would fast even if Asar Bateves comes out on Shabbos. But today, Merz Hashem, we investigate further the deeper aspects of Asar Bateves. We have un- unbelievable information. Hashem tells another Yechezka, Ben Adam, Yechezka Chavdal at Pasuk Beis. Ben Adam, Hashem says to Yechezka, son of man, Kesav l'cha Hashem hayom. Write the name of the day. Es etzem hayom ase. This very day. Samach Melech Babel, El Yushalayim, the king of Babel, Nebuchadnezzar, set siege to Jerusalem. Be etzem hayom ase. On this very day. Very interesting. The repetition of the Pasuk. Shem Hayom, Etzem Hayom, and then again Etzem Hayom Azeh. And the Chassam Soifer, and the Drush of Chassam Soifer, in his Drush for Zion Teves on page Ayin Ches, he makes note, he takes note of these observations, and he says on the third line, V'yesh li diuk, ha-kefel Shem Hayom, Etzem Hayom. What's the meaning of, in this Pasuk, the Shem Hayom, Etzem Hayom. Also at the end of the Pasuk, when it talks about Nebuchadnezzar, what does it say? Nebuchadnezzar didn't care about the Shem Hayyim. All he cared about was Etzem Hayyim Azah. What does Asach Sam suffer? What does it mean, Etzem Hayyim Azah? What does the Yitzumay Shalyim? What does that expression mean? Says the Sam Soifer, to answer this question, we have to ask another question. We have to investigate the following. There's something that is absolutely unique about Asar Bateves. When it comes to Tisha B'av, five tragedies happened on Tisha B'av. First Beis HaMikdash, second Beis HaMikdash, Beitar. And it all began, of course, with the Chet Why did all these tragedies happen on the very same day? The Gemara says in Tainus, Magagalin, Zchos Liyam Zakai, V'chai V'liyam Chayef. It's a day of misfortune. So... We assume that whenever misfortune happens, it happens on a day of misfortune. Or Yedzayim Betamos. Why do we fast on Yedzayim Betamos? That's the day Nebuchadnezzar breached the walls of Yushalayim in the times of the second Mesa Mikdash. But not only that, many tragedies happened. Five tragedies happened. And it began, of course, with the Chet Hamaragla, with the Chet Ha'egel, excuse me. The Chet Ha'egel happened on Yudzayin Matamas, Moshe broke the Luchais, and Apostomus burnt the Sefer Torah, the Tamid was, was uh, stopped on Yudzayin Matamas. Five tragedies happened on Yudzayin Matamas. And yet when it comes to Asar Bateves, only one thing happened. Nebuchadnezzar surrounded Yushalayim in the times of the first Beis HaMikdash. So you say, well, that wasn't the only tragedy that happened during this period of the year. On the ninth day of Tamas, on the ninth day of Teves, we said this morning, was the Petira of Ezra HaSoifer. On the eighth day of Teves, the Torah was translated into Greek, which was a tragedy for Klal Yisrael, for various reasons. Darkness descended to the world for three days. Chassam Soifer adds, Nechemya ben Chaklaya passed away on the eighth day of Teves. So while yes, this is a tragic period, on the eighth is the Petira of Nehemia. It's the day of the translation of the Torah. The ninth is the Petira of Ezra. And of course the tenth is the day Nebuchadnezzar surrounded Yerushalayim. But nevertheless, nevertheless, why didn't these tragedies all happen on the very same day? Tisha B'av, all five the same day. Asar B'teves, all five the same day. And yet when it comes to Asar Bateves, they didn't happen the same day. They didn't happen the same day. Some tragedies happened on the 8th, some on the 9th, some on the 10th. Some Sefer asked further. Every fast day, which is a day of tragedy, what made it a day of tragedy? What made it a day of tragedy is the fact that we did not there on that day. So in Yudzayin Batamos, even though that's the day the Romans broke through the walls of Yishayim by Bayashani, we said earlier in the Bukhanes, it was the Romans. But that was a day of that Klai Yisrael sinned. Yitzayim Batamos was a day of the Chet Ho'ega. So we sinned and made it a day of misfortune. Tishabav wasn't just a day of misfortune. 
We sinned, the Maraglim. We cried Bechir Shalchina. So when the Klai Yisrael does an Avera, it stamps the day as a day of misfortune. Even Saim Gedalia. The tragedy was that Gedalia died. But the sin was we killed him. But Asar Bateves, what Avera did we do? We don't find anywhere in history that we did an Avera on Asar Bateves. All we find is it was a day of tragedy. It was a day that Nebuchadnezzar surrounded Yerushalayim and he said, see Yerushalayim. So we have these two unique things about Asar Bateves. Number one, the tragedies occurred, they, they were staggered, they didn't all happen at the same time. And number two, we didn't do any Avera on Asar Bateves. What Avera did we do? These are the very interesting questions. I never thought about these questions. These are very challenging questions of the Chassam Seifer and the Drasha is Chassam Seifer. So the Chassam Seifer answer is an amazing Chiddush. Chassam Seifer answers that Asara Batavis is different than any other fast day. Asara Batavis is not dependent on the day of the month. Asara Batavis is dependent on something else entirely. It's dependent on a certain number of days from the beginning of the year. Asara Batavis is the 98th day of the year. 98. 98. From Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, that's 90. Approximately. And Asara Batavis should be 100. But, usually the months are staggered. So one month is Malay, one month is Chaser. In a, year, in a normal year, the 98th day, if um, Cheshvan and Kislev are both Chaser, so then the 10th day of Teves is the 98th day of the year. What's the significance of the 98th day of the year? We know in the Teichacha, there are 98 callers in the Teichacha. The number 98 is a very tragic number. The 98 that Sadik has Klalois and the Teichacha. So as opposed to Tisha B'Av is the 9th day of Av. Yudzayin B'Tamuz is the 17th day of Tamuz. But Asara B'Teves is not the 10th day of Teves. Asara B'Teves is the 98th day of the year. On some years, the 98th day of the year is the 8th day of Tamuz. That is the 8th day of Teves. In the year that Nehemiah passed away, in the year that they commissioned the Torah to be written in Greek, the both months earlier were chaser, were missing, were, were excuse me, were Malay, were Malay, and the, and the 98th day of the year came out on Ches. One year, one month was Malay, one month was chaser, so the 98th day came out on Tes. And the year that Nebuchadnezzar came on the Beis Hamikdash, that year, it was Malay. Both months were Malay. So it was Yud. When Nebuchadnezzar selected that day, what was he relying on? Be'etzem hayoyim hazeh. He was relying not on the day of the month. He was relying on the inherent day. The 98th day of the year. That's why the Pasuk says, Yechezkel, write down the name of the day, which is the 10th of which is the 10th of Teves. Write down the Yetzim Hayoim, the 98th day. But you should know, what was, you, what was Nebuchadnezzar relying on? He was relying on the Yetzim Hayoim. He was relying on the fact that you know why this day was tragic? Not because Klai Yisrael ever did an Avera on this day. It's not like Tishvav. It's not like Shavas of Atamos. He was relying on the fact that the Yetzim Hayoim, that it was this very day. Ah. Take a look. Well, what's the relationship of just because there are 98 colors, that each color is a day that's a 98 day? So maybe we'll the, see. The young Sarah? Well, maybe we'll see. He says, The day of the month does not cause this at all. It is the day of the month. It is the of the month. It is the of the It is the number of days. In Rosh Hashanah, Ad Yoteves, B'Shana Chasera, in a missing year, in a year that Av Bitrei Chaserem, in a year that Cheshvan and Kislev are missing, Asar B'Teves is the 98th day of the year. Asu B'yem Tzadik Ches, M'yem Rosh Hashanah, Ki Misbar Klala, Shev Mishnah Torah. The number of curses of Mishnah Torah, Az Heichal HaTzar Azeh. 98 is the number of curses of Mishnah Torah. Ve'hayoyis, Ki Ze'enu Tel Abiyam HaChadash. 
Now that we're saying that Asar is not dependent on the day of the month, Rak the Mitzvah Tzadik Ches Yomim, Alkein Yomat Tzadik Ches, Hu HaMuchan Liyam Chayev, Lo Yimei Chadashim Garmi. It's not the day of the month. The Nafkamina would be that in a year where the year everything is going right, so then what happened? It was, in other words, Malay Chaser, then it was the ninth of Tevin. Right? In the year that Ezra Sefer passed away, it was a regular year. It was Malay Chaser. In a year, Shalem, where you had two 30 day months, it was on the eighth day of Tevis. That's why Nehemiah and passed away and the Torah is translated into Greek. Right this very day, write the essence of the day, don't say it's the day that's causing it. It's not the day of the month. It's the number of days from the beginning of the year. It's the 98th day of the year. What's the significance of 98? The Klalas of the Teichacha. Do we verify, uh, uh, verify that the year in which Ezra, when Nehemiah act, passed away, it was actually the, the 98th day of that particular year? You mean you want outside verification? You want to call in a second opinion? No, Chassam Sefer doesn't... Uh, this, this is his... Uh, this is his chedr. So Chassam Sefer is saying an amazing thing, that Asar B'Tevis is different than any, any other day in the Jewish calendar. There is no day in the Jewish calendar that's dependent on the number of day of the year it is. There's only one day like that. Asar B'Tevis, that's why it says Be'etzen Hayyem Mazah. It's the inherent quality and not the day of the month. We're going to come back to explain, that's Hashem, very soon, what exactly is so significant about the number 98 in connection to Asar B'Tevis? And we still have not really answered the question, was there any hate that happened on this day that made it a day of tragedy? Some sort of are saying, well, it's different. It's not a matter of the sin. It's the number. It's a tragic number. We have over here a number three. We have over here number three. Of all the episodes discussed in Sefer Bereshis, this comes from Rav Asher Weiss on the Parsha. Now, why do I have it here in English? Because I opened up the Hebrew. And this wasn't there in the Hebrew. So, I, uh, my good friend in Muncie, Aaron Subar, who, by the way, mans an uh, email address called, used to be called Subara1836 at Gmail. But now, if you ever want my comments for any of the shiurim, Rabbi Gladstein Source Sheets at Gmail. And my friend in Muncie, he mans it. He'll be happy to send it to you. So he got me Rav Usher Weiss's number. And the problem was uh, on my phone, my cell phone, I don't have an Israel plan. So I called my brother, Ari Gladstein, he's a, a Rebbe in Eretz Yisrael, and I asked him to call Rav Asher Weiss to find out the following. The pieces in the English Rav Asher Weiss, where do they come from? He writes them. They're not in the Hebrew. So you say, why didn't you call up Art Scroll? I did. I called up Art Scroll first, and I asked um, them, who's writing these pieces? Is it the editor? Is it? No. They he said... They're not 100% sure, but I need to call Rav Asher Weiss. So, we got Rav Asher Weiss's number. I told my brother, do me a favor, call, call Rav Asher Weiss. Three minutes later, he says, I called him. <laughs> and he said that all the pieces in the English are authentic. They're all his own chidushim. But they're chidushim that were added after the Hebrew came out. And in Hashem, in future editions of the Hebrew will be in the Hebrew. But I always like to have the original source, which is the, the English. And he has a very... Uh, um, a very interesting observation, and that is that in the entire Sefer Bereshis, the topic that is given the greatest detail and is talking about at the greatest le- spoken about in the greatest length is the story of Yosef Fatzadik. It's four parshias: Parshas Vayeshev, Miketz, Vayigash, Vayichi. Even Avram Avinu doesn't have four parshias. Avram Avinu Lech Lecha. Vayera, Chayisara, Yitzchak, Taldais, Yaakov, Vayishlach, Vayetze, Vayishlach. So of all the people in Bereshis, yeah, you know, back to Yaakov, but if you want to know which individual in the Chumash, in Sefer, definitely Yosef HaTzadik, which is a very noteworthy observation. Why is the Torah giving more detail to Yosef HaTzadik Almost one third of the whole sefer. Okay, Rabbeinu Bichai in this week's parsha. Didn't he say that uh, 
the Maestro, the Yosef formed the foundation of Klal Yisrael. Remember, we had in the. Let's see, Yishir. let's see, let's see. Rabbeinu Bachaye, Pashas Vayechi. He quotes the Medrash. The Yaakov Avinu looks at the names of all of his children Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Issachar, Zavulan, Dan, Naphtali, God, Asher, Yosef, and Benyamin, right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty good, no? Mm-hmm. So, right. well, and he sees that two letters do not appear in their names Ches, Ches, Ches and Tess. Chait. Chait. So he says, ah, oh, they have no Chait. I'm going to tell them about the Kates, the end of days. But then Yaakov says, hey, wait a second. They're also missing another two letters. Kuf and Sadi, Kates. Oh, there's no Kates in their names. I can't tell them about the Kates. That's what the Medrash says. <laughs> that our Yaakovina looks. They're missing Ches and Tes. They have no Chait. Oh, no Chait. I'll tell you about the Galas. And then he says, hey, wait a second. You also don't have a kuf and a tzadi, so I can't tell you about the kates. Very strange comment on the matters. I mean, what was he thinking in the beginning? And what do you think? I mean, at the very moment he sees they don't have the ches and the tes, he should also see they don't have the kuf and the tzadi. What was he thinking? Well, he only looked at the first half in the beginning, and he said, oh, they don't have the ches and the tes. And then only later he realized they don't have the kuf and the tzadi. What's the meaning of this? When Yosef HaTzadik was discovered to be alive, the Pasuk says, Vatechi Ruach Yaakov. Yaakov came alive. His spirit came alive. Says Rashi, the Shechina rested on Yosef HaTzadik. So we tend to think, what does that mean? Yaakov was happy again, and the Shechina came back to him. When Yosef was sold, the Shechina left him. We tend to think, why? Because Yaakov was sad, so the Shechina left him. So we find in the Gemara Sachem that on Yaakov Avinu's deathbed, Yaakov wanted. Yaakov, we find in 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 Masechet uh, Sachem Daf Nun Vav that when Yaakov Avinu was about to pass away, he was afraid because he's about to reveal the Kates, and the Kates leaves him. Wait a second. The Kates leaves him. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar said, no, the Kates didn't leave. He just, he saw they don't have the Kuf and the Tzadi, so he didn't want to tell them. How do you end? It's a contradiction. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says from the Medrash that why didn't Yaakov tell the children the Kates because they don't have the Kuf and the Tzadi. The Gemara says, no, that's not the real reason. The real reason is because he, he, it, it eluded him. And then Yaakov said, oh, it eluded me. Maybe one of you children are, there, are disqualified. Maybe there's a psal. Maybe one of you are unworthy. So what do they tell their father? Shema Yisrael, Hashem Leikeinu, Hashem Echad. Just like you believe in one God, we believe in one God, we're all good. Why did the Kates leave Yaakov Avinu? What does that mean, the Kates left him? And the Shechino left him. As Yaakov Avinu was about to reveal the Kates, Chazal say the Shechino left him. Right? You take a look in number 8 from the Sefer Siach Yitzchak. These are the drushes of Rav Yitzchak Isaac Chaver, the Talmud of the Rav Nachem Endo Mishkalav. And he writes, if he brings down from the Medrash, that as Yaakov was about to reveal the end to his children, the Shechino left. What does this mean? Why did the Shechino leave Yaakov? And again, that's not what Rabbeinu Bechayi says. Rabbeinu Bechayi says they don't have the letters Kuf and Sadi. What's the meaning of the Shechino left Yaakov when Yosef was sold? And the Shechino left Yaakov when he was about to reveal the end? So Rabbi Yitzchak Isaac Chavar explains that everybody understands that for, Cha- for Klai Yisrael to be a viable entity, we have to be one unit. We have to be, have Achtos. Now what does Achtos mean? Achtos means the following. Achtos means where everybody recognizes that every individual and every segment of Kla Yisrael provides an indispensable service for the Jewish people. This group, that group, this Hasidus, that Hasidus, this type, that type, each one is necessary the same way you need your hand. If the hand is only going to serve itself, then the body will never have food. 
So what does the hand do? The hand recognizes that it has to serve the body. So the hand goes out and buys food, and it puts it in the mouth. Why, does it, why, would, the hand, why would the hand put the food in the mouth? Because the hand knows that everything is one unit. That if, if it wants to be a viable entity, it has to service the mouth, which will then service the whole body. In order for Mashiach to come, and this is, you know, beating a dead horse, everybody recognizes there has to be a degree of achtos. The achtos will be the vehicle where the Shekhinah could rest. But if Kal Yisrael is a disparate group of people, the Shekhinah has nowhere to rest. When Yosef HaTzadik was sold, Everybody recognizes that was really the first instance, the first case of Sina Salachim. So what happens to the Shechina? Shechina leaves. Not because Yaakov was sad. Because we don't have a, a Kal Yisrael anymore. You have 11 brothers. You, don't have, you have 11 brothers and one brother. You don't have Kal Yisrael. So the Shechina left. The Shechina has nowhere to go. When does the Shechina come back? When they're back together. When they're together again. When Yosef is still alive and Yaakov says... We're going to go down to Mitzrayim, 12 Shvatim, the Shechina comes back. Not because Yaakov was sad, Yaakov was happy. No, the Shechina needs Klal Yisrael. When Yosef is sold, you don't have Klal Yisrael. When, you, when Klal Yisrael um, unites, we have uh, Yisrael, and Hashem could rest on Klal Yisrael. So says, the Chassam Sefer, number 9, Yaakov knew the whole time there's no Kuf and Sadik in his son's names. But they don't need Kuf and Sadik. You know why? Because they're Mikabates Nidche Amo Yisrael. They're a kibbutz. Kuf based Sadi. So even though their names don't have Kuf and Sadi, but the conceptual achievement of the kibbutz Yisrael provided the Kuf and the Tzadi. They don't need the Kuf and the Tzadi. They have a kibbutz. They're together. They're together, I could tell them about the Kates. Because if they're together, there will be a Kates. But the problem was, even though there was Yaakov, when they were together, when Yaakov they were never knew about the Mechim Yosef. He never knew about it. Right. He thought some wolf, maybe not that wolf that we spoke about earlier, but a different wolf, right? A different monster. A werewolf, or not a werewolf, whatever it was. Yaakov thought Yosef just ended up in Mitzrayim. So when he hears Yosef's still alive, he says, Oh, I always suspected the brothers of some hanky-panky. Nah, now I know Yosef, uh, something happened to him, he's in Mitzrayim. And there's the kibbutz, so they have the kuf and the tzadi. I could tell them about the kates. But as Yaakov is about to bless the brothers, you know what he sees? Baruch HaKodesh. Vayimaru varoivu. Yosef didn't end up in Mitzrayim because he got lost. Yosef was sold down to Mitzrayim. Ah, oh, says the Chsam Seifer number 9. Yosef was sold down to Mitzrayim. The kibbutz is off. There is no kibbutz Yisrael. There is no collection. There is no gathering. They hated him. They were sinna. So now they can't hear about the Kates. But they had that in before he went to Mitzrayim. I and mean, they didn't like him. They bought some raw... There was no achdos amongst the brothers then. Yeah, there's either, either sinna and there's sinna. So, you know, maybe... But now that they sold him, there's no kibbutz. There's no kibbutz. So originally Yaakov Avinu thought, before he saw Baruch HaKadosh that Yosef was sold, the letters Kuf and Sadik appear through the kibbutz. But now that he sees Baruch HaKadosh, Vayimaru Varoivu, that they sold Yosef, the kibbutz is off. So Yaakov says, I can't tell you about the kates. I can't tell you about it. What does it mean as Yaakov was about to tell them about the Achris Hayomim, the Shechina left? Yaakov thought that you know why the Kates is leaving me? Because right now you brothers don't have Avas Achim anymore. So the brothers say, no, 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 it's not us. We're together again. We have the kibbutz. It's the Achris Hayomim. That's why the Shechina is leaving you. You know why the Shechina is leaving you? Because the Achris Hayomim, there was no Achdos. So when Yaakov tries to tell and think, when will the Geula come? He can't see it. Why? The brother says, it's not us. Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekeinu Hashem Echad. Right now, we're in Mitzrayim. We're in Bekibbutz Echad. Beis Yosef writes, when all the brothers gathered in Mitzrayim, they were Masaki in the Brachan Shemana Esrei, Mekabes Nidchei Amo Yisrael. They had the Kibbutz in Mitzrayim. The problem was the Achris Hayomim. 
So when Yaakov thinks about the Achras Hayom and what happens to him, the Shechina leaves him. The Shechina leaves him. Because regarding the time of the Achras Hayom, the Shechina can't be here. Until we're able to rectify the problem. So wait a minute. So what is so, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The number 98. Asara Bateves is the 98th day of the year. What does that have to do with Asara Bateves? The Chidah writes, there's a Pasuk in Yeshaya, look at number 11. Ki chay omar Hashem, china mim karatem, you were sold for nothing, v'loi bekesav tiga'elu, and therefore you will not be redeemed for money. If you were sold for money, you could be redeemed for money. But if you're sold for nothing, you got to be redeemed for nothing. What is the meaning of this Pasuk? Says the Chidah, how many klalais took place in the Teichacha? 98. When were they fulfilled? Bayasheni. Why was the Bayasheni destroyed? Sinashin. What's the gematria of Chinam? 98. 98. No. Says the Chida. So now we understand the meaning of the Pasuk. Kayam HaRashem, Chinam Nimkartem. You were sold and delivered into the hands of your enemies because of Chinam. Sinas Chinam. And therefore, Veloibi Kesef Tiga'elu. You will not be redeemed with money. Money means mitzvahs. Ayev kasef la yizva kasef, ayev mitzvahs la yizva mitzvahs. You think you do more mitzvahs, you learn more Torah. You daven better. Mashiach will come? No, ain't can help. Chinam nem karatem. The base of mitzvahs was destroyed because of sinas chinam. So therefore, it will not be redeemed with mitzvahs. It has to be redeemed with avas chinam. So the 98th day of the year corresponds Asar Bateves, Techinam, Sinas Chinam. What does that have to do with Asar Bateves? So it's brought down in the Sefer over here. Rabbi Baruch Simon quotes Rav Shlaim Fisher in the Sefer Jerusha's Bayes Yishai. He asks the same question as the Chsam Sefer that we see every Tainus. Every Tainus is not just a, a day of tragedy, it's a day of Avera which brought the tragedy. Tishabav is in Chid Hamaraglim. Shiva Sabatamos is the Egel. But yet we don't know anything that happened on Asar Bateve. So some several wanted to suggest it's not a hate, it's a day of misfortune, it's the number 98. But listen to what he suggests. He suggests that even though we don't know what day Mechiras Yosef took place, doesn't say in the Chumash. He says, Ilule de Mistafina. If I would not be afraid, Amino Shaya Biyayim Asar Bateve. And he says, even though there's no raya, there's a zeicher ladavar. What's the mazal of Chaydesh Teves? Gedi, the goats. What did they shecht when they sold Yitzchak, uh, Yosef? The mechir, right? By Yishchatu Seir Izim. But the doesn't always come out on the Sar It comes out on the 98th day. So no, and Sarah for Sarah us Sarah. it always comes out on Asar B'tavis. We always commemorate it. But the Nekudah of Asar B'tavis is, it captures the auspicious time of the 98th day. So we said, 98, what does 98 Klaus have to do with anything? Well, Chidah says, 98 is Chinam, Sinas Chinam. And how beautiful it fits in then, that according to this suggestion, that if Mechir Yosef took place on Asar B'tavis, that was the greatest... Manifestation of Sinas Chinam that we ever had. The greatest manifestation of Sinas Chinam. What day is there that we should be punished with Chinam, the 98th day of the year, than the day of Mechiras Yosef? Very interesting. Very interesting. So, according to the Chsam Seifer, who understands that Asar Batavis is number 98. We're putting it together with the Chida, that 98 is the Gemachi of Sinas Chinam, putting it together with this comment of the Sefer Be- Drashos Beis Yishai, this was the day of Mechir Yosef. But La'asad Lavai, we know the Navi tells us that Tzayim Haravi, V'tzayim HaChamishi, V'tzayim HaShri, V'tzayim HaSir, Yiyah, L'Beis Yehuda, L'Sasim, L'Simcha, L'Maya Adem Toivim, that the Asar B'Tayus will turn into a Yom Tif. So what will happen to the 98? So the Chida writes elsewhere that 98 is a good number also. Nagila, Venismacha, Bach, Nagila is also 98. So La'as Lavai, when we're able to be Masakim, the Chait, the Mechiras Yosef, that's what we say in Yom Kippur Davening. Ki ata li Yisrael, 
Umachal on the Shifte Yeshurun. Sacham the Yisrael is God forgives the Chet Ha'egal. When we said, Ela Elekecha Yisrael. Right? Slach no la avoy na mazeh. Ki atza song Yisrael. Umachal on the Shifte Yeshurun. For what Avera? Mechir as Yaisi. Slach is also named here. Slach is also named here. Very good. This is very interesting. It says of Asher Weiss. Look at number one. Look at um, number sixteen. Now we understand why of all the stories in the Chumash Bereshis, the one that is given the most attention is Mechiras Yosef. Yosef going down to Mitzrayim. Yosef, Yosef in Mitzrayim. Yosef coming out of Mitzrayim, because certainly all the messages of the Torah, the one message that is most relevant to all of us is Sinas Chino. The lesson of Yosef of all. The things we need to think about uh, as we conclude Sefer Bereshis, Parshas Chazak, Parshas Ayichi, as we conclude Sefer Bereshis, what we need to take with us is certainly what the Torah gives most attention to. Yosef HaTzadik. What happened to him? What came as a result of, his sinas, of the Sinas Chinam? We went into Golas. What came as a result of the Achdus the brothers displayed to him afterwards? The Geula. So we should be zoicha that the 98th day of the year, Asar B'teves, which is a day of tragedy, is a day that Nebuchadnezzar was Samach, says in B'chassam Soifer, Samach Melech Bavel. He was relying on Etzem Ayoy He's relying on the fact this is the 98th day. The 98th day of the year, which is Gematri Achinam, which is suggested to be the day of Mechir Asi Yosef. When Yaakov sees the brothers, they don't have the Ches and the Tes, he wants to tell them the Kates, but they don't have Kuf and Sadi. If you have Achdos, you have Kibbutz, you'll have the Kates also. Should be Zoycha, that the 98th day of the year should turn into Nagila, should turn into 98 Brachas for Kla Yisrael. It should be day of Slach, which is also 98, right? It should be a day of Sasa and Nesimcha, by the way. You have 98 Shever Brachas, over the course of Shever Brachas, you have 98 Shever Brachas. You also have... 98 plus of Sukkos, which is Zman Simcha Senu. So the 98th day of the year should turn into a Yom Sasan Besimcha for Klal Yisrael. Ad Bias Gal Tzedek, Bimher of Amen. Amen. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.